Hello everyone, welcome to Clickheads, I'm Eddie the Chump and today we're going to be talking about training your aim in Valorant. This is a huge topic, so for this first video in the series, we're going to focus in on the core fundamentals of how to aim well before moving on to more complex ideas in the following episodes. So let's begin with the most fundamental setting you will come to depend on, and that's sensitivity. So the thing about the decision concerning what sensitivity you should use is that you need to understand the strengths and weaknesses of low versus high sensitivity in a game like Valorant. A lower sensitivity setting will mean that it takes more effort and physical movement to have the same on-screen results versus a higher one. Now you might actually want this because you might be an arm aimer, whereas someone who aims predominantly with their wrist needs a higher sense to make smaller movements count for more. The best players are usually a mix of both, capable of both excellent pre-aim discipline with their crosshair placement and fast flicks when they need to. If you're a beginner or someone who finds their aim really needs improvement, it's my advice to lower your sensitivity quite a lot. The reason for this is lower sense aimers are forced to develop good fundamental skills because making big flashy adjustments is harder. Therefore, they need to be prepared for gunfights ahead of time and make smaller adjustments to enemy players' heads when the need arises. The basic rule of thumb is you need to be able to comfortably perform a 180 degree turn with the largest swipe of your mouse pad. This is the reason a lot of CS players use giant mouse pads. They have more room to maneuver while also giving them greater precision. The DPI and in-game sense settings of all the pros are mostly quite similar, with 400, 800 and 1600 DPI being very common, and the in-game sense hovering around 0.5 to 0.7. I'll put on screen three pro settings so you can compare them to yours. A way you can tell if your sense is perhaps a little bit too high for you is if you watch your gameplay back and you constantly overshoot targets when trying to acquire them. If you over aim and then have to readjust, you're wasting vital bursts of time in which which you can be punished. Now overshooting is something that happens to everyone, but the best players do it the least, and that is because they have become very familiar with their sensitivity and have decent screen control. This is a part of muscle memory. They have enough experience to know without conscious thought how much effort a given adjustment will take and can perform that adjustment automatically. The crucial thing to grasp here is, to train yourself like that requires consistency, not only in your practice, but in your settings. How can you train muscle memory if you're always changing the sensitivity, throwing your body off? You can't, is the reality of it. So find the sense that feels comfortable by testing out 180 degree turns and stick with it. Just also internalize the trade-offs inherent in each setting. Low sense requires more discipline, but is easier to be precise with, and a high sense can help you transition quickly from target to target, which is good for taking on multiple enemies at once, or for playing a flick-based playstyle, like an op player for example. Movement-based accuracy. Now that we've covered perhaps the most fundamental decision, it's time to grasp some of the mechanics that really define Valorant. The single most important concept to grasp is that to be accurate in Valorant, you have to be still when you actually shoot. Now, walking and shooting is way more accurate in this game than, say, Counter-Strike, but it's still not 100%. A lot of new players to these kind of games are confused about why the bullets are separated from their crosshair. I was right on this guy's head. Why didn't he die? My bullets didn't go straight. Well, most likely that's because you either didn't stop to shoot or because your recoil had not reset yet. We'll cover that topic in the next section, but for the moment, let's cover moving and shooting and why with the main rifles at least, you shouldn't really be doing that. Let's look at these two examples. In one, I fully run and tap my trigger, and in the other, I run, stop, shoot, run, stop, shoot, etc. Look at where the bullets go in comparison. Every weapon in Valorant has a movement penalty to accuracy, with the main rifles and snipers having the most severe impact, and say the SMGs and pistols being more forgiving. You can see this if you turn movement error on in your crosshair settings. The wider the crosshair while moving, the less accurate it will be if you fire before you've stopped. This touches on something that runs much deeper. To be a good aimer in Valorant, you not only need command of your mouse hand, but also your keyboard hand. Arguably, your precision with your movement is even more important as it will stop you from progressing even if you've trained your mouse mechanics to a much higher level. You are only ever as good as your movement allows you to be. This is something even players with quite a high level of experience can get wrong in the heat of the moment and it's one of my personal weaknesses. This is why in my crosshair video I suggested beginners use movement error to see when they can shoot accurately. Think of movement error like training wheels. When you start out, you will need them, but as you get more confident, you 
you can leave them behind. If you are losing a lot of fights where you thought your crosshair was on a target, your movement is probably the culprit and not your aim. So what are the methods players use to make themselves accurate while trying to be mobile? Well, in Counter-Strike, counter-strafing is king, but in Valorant, it's a bit different. Counter-strafing is using the directional movement keys in the opposite direction of your movement the instant before you shoot. Again, I'll show you an example with movement error on so you can see what's going on. In Valorant, when you press, say, the A key to move left, when you press the D button and hold both buttons down, your character will actually be perfectly still, meaning you will be perfectly accurate. So if peeking to the left, you can hold A and tap D to stop yourself for a split second and shoot before you continue on. Likewise, you could just hold A to strafe, then hold A and D together to fully stop. In CS, you needed to do some form of counter strafe to speed up the process of being accurate, but in Valorant, this mechanic is a little bit more relaxed. You can actually just let go of your directional buttons and your character will stop very quickly without the need to input anything else. A lot of players bind their walk command to spacebar and their jump to mouse wheel. Now, this can help with bunny hopping, but tapping the walk command and letting go of your movement keys will also stop your character very, very quickly. Having space as your walk bind is much easier to manage than having it as your shift key as it's much larger. However you do it, it's really important you practice your movement discipline almost as much as your aiming mechanics because this will hold you back. You can trust me on this. Recall control and firing modes. Okay, so now that we've covered some really basic but necessary information in how to control your character, let's talk about how to control your weapons. Valorant is different than CSGO in the recoil department. In CS, all the guns have fixed patterns that were always the same. This made it possible for players to master the patterns and use spraying as the default firing mode virtually at all times, with tapping being used at very far distances. Valorant has fixed patterns, but only for the beginning of a gun spray. After, say, the seventh bullet, there is deviation introduced that is random, meaning spraying is by design unreliable. What does that mean for you, the player? Well, it means that you will have to learn when tapping, bursting, and spraying are preferable based on the scenario you're faced with. Tapping is great for long range, bursting at far to medium, and spraying when up close, perhaps against multiple enemies. It is a bad habit to spray at every target no matter the range, which if you come from CSGO is understandable, but still, you will need to unlearn that and adjust. Whatever firing mode you choose, you will have to contend with recoil, and for the first burst of your spray, you can learn to control this. Practice like this example against a wall and try to get the spread of each gun as tight as possible in the first burst. This will really help you. Perhaps even practice your counter strafing in combination with this bursting control. This will give you an understanding of the tempo of bursting with each weapon as each gun resets its recoil slightly differently. Firing error on your crosshair settings can help you learn this tempo too, as no matter how perfect your strafe, if your recoil hasn't reset, your next burst won't be accurate. Firing error will give you feedback on when you can shoot again, and just like movement error, can really help out beginners grasp these fundamental skill sets. Crosshair placement. So let's end this introduction video with the first complex idea concerning improving your aim. Once you have grasped how to control your character and your weapons properly, you'll want to go out into the game and start tapping heads. But unless you navigate the game world properly, you're not going to give yourself the best chance of doing that. A lot of beginner players walk around the world with no crosshair discipline. This isn't just a Valorant thing, it's in most FPS. Newer players will instinctively aim towards the floor because of the gun model on their screen. Aiming down gives them better vision of what's in front of them, and although that's true, it also massively hampers their ability to react to anything. Have you ever played a tactical FPS where you walk around a corner and there's an enemy waiting for you who seems to instantly delete you before you can even react? Of course you have, everyone has. Well, the reason that happens is because the enemy is set up for the fight before it happens and you are not. How they do this is with trained crosshair placement. This technique is exactly as it sounds. You have to place your crosshair at head height ahead of time and track likely locations of enemies as you move. If done correctly, this means the adjustments you would have to make to hit someone in a given spot are much smaller and much quicker to pull off. I'm going to show you three clips now from some pro Valorant players, AZK and Crashies, who both play for T1. I'll start with the simplest example to show you the principles, then walk you through some more prolonged examples to show you how this skill touches everything that they do. This first clip on Split is from AZK and he's decided to peek mid on attack. Notice how the right side is smoked, so he doesn't waste too much time tracking this. In 
Instead, he lines up his aim on where he thinks an enemy might be, and that's left side cubby. With his aim pre-placed, he strafes out and catches the enemy holding an angle and kills them. Now, if he hadn't have pre-aimed, this enemy would have likely killed him. Instead, AZK has the initiative and does most of the work to secure this kill before he's even visible. Let's look at a later round from the same game, this time on defensive retake. I want you to look at how deliberate his crosshair placement is as he checks angles for where enemies could be. Even when his teammate dies and he sees the enemy and his crosshair isn't quite in the right place, look how quickly he repositions it for when the phoenix inevitably repeaks. Because he did that, because his fundamentals are so strong, this phoenix player didn't really stand a chance. He then goes on to find the last player through his teammate's death to his left and watch how he tracks his crosshair at head height on every angle he thinks the rays could be before finally finding them and having a much easier shot to hit to clutch the round. I also want you to notice how he's moving. He's not sprinting, he's moving in short controlled bursts or walking, but when he's peaking, he lets go of shift and counter strafes from full speed, even if it's a very short burst. This is a combination of everything we've spoken about today, and it's actually quite simple to achieve if you start training your skills now. The next clip is of Crashies as he entries onto B on bind. Notice how he's tracking elbow, gets info that there's an enemy below hooker, tracks the container and then places his crosshair at the edge of his trap and methodically moves in short bursts while having his crosshair in exactly the right place. He kills the enemy cipher with a very small adjustment when he becomes visible and immediately places his crosshair onto hooker window. Then he transfers his crosshair to CT spawn as he's crossing sight while limiting his own vulnerability, throws a trap down and returns to watching hooker. Now he even gets flashed here, but look how he adjusts. He gets into cover, watches his back and then aims at hooker through the container so that when he does peek out, his crosshair will be in the right place. He does so and look how close his reticle is to the phoenix when he does. Again, another simple small adjustment to eliminate him. He returns his focus to CT and spots another player but doesn't quite kill him. But look how he places his crosshair for the next interaction. He knows the enemy is to the left side, so he pre-aims for his strafe again. The enemy actually peeks him first, but because his crosshair placement is so good, he simply adjusts and shoots him in the head. That's three Three entry kills with no massive mechanically demanding flicks required, only great movement discipline and crosshair placement. This is against other pros by the way, and this is how top tier players make what would be hard shots much much easier for themselves. The best part is, you can do this too. You can improve massively if you learn the fundamentals and perfect them. In a game like Valorant, it's very easy to tell if someone is good by how they move and how they place their crosshair. At first, this will have to be conscious effort, just like every other skill I've talked about. But if you keep repeating good behavior, it will eventually become automatic. Let's look at this clip of how I, an intermediate player at best, clear this corner on split mid. I think someone might be holding on the right hand side here, so I pre-aim my crosshair, strafe out and stop as soon as I see them and shoot. If I had just walked up and not pre-aimed this, I absolutely absolutely would have died to this player. If I had been aiming lower or with less discipline, I would not have had the time to turn and hit this guy while stopping and doing everything else. Valorant and games like it are about efficiency, how much work you can get done with your movement and crosshair placement before a gunfight even happens. And I learned to do this by watching the best players just like I've showed you today. And as I said earlier, you can do this too. This video was all about learning the fundamentals that everything else good will come from with practice. In our next video, we will cover some slightly more advanced ideas about how to properly peek, how your relation to cover and map geometry affects your fights without you even knowing it, and how you might be holding angles completely completely wrong defensively. But for now, that's about all. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found the info useful. If you like the content on this channel, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you get notified when we upload. Until next time.